Hey, how's it going guys? So my name is Kieran and I'm here with the BMS to talk to you about some amazing mycological mysteries. So we are going to head back a couple of hundred of million years now and talk to you about the dinosaurs. So everyone's favorite terrible lizards, the dinosaurs, have been a subject of fascination for absolutely years now. Ever since the first dinosaur fossils were found in Sussex, England in 1822, people have wanted to know a lot more about the lives and ultimately the untimely death of these super creatures. Even before dinosaurs were officially discovered, there has been a fascination with them for thousands of years. Back in the day, lots of the tales about griffins, ogres and dragons were most probably about dinosaur fossils, people finding them in the ground and then creating these tales in order to explain them. Over 2000 years ago, Chang Qu of China found bones in the ground which he described as dragon bones. Now modern paleontologists are almost certain that he was talking about dinosaur fossils. Obviously ever since they were discovered, everyone has wanted to know why are they not here anymore? What killed the dinosaurs? And the most popular theory up to this point has been that an asteroid struck the earth, killing off a huge amount of the dinosaurs and destroying the environment for any of the survivors. We must remember as well that it wasn't just the dinosaurs that died around this time. It was a massive extinction event which killed off hundreds if not thousands of species of animals and plants. So how do we know that it was an asteroid? Now I'm going to put up a word on the screen and you can interpret how to pronounce it however you like because I'm almost certainly going to get it wrong. Chicxulub is a massive impact crater in Mexico, which is the hypothesized beginning of the extinction of the dinosaurs. We know it was an asteroid which caused this crater due to something called the KPG boundary. The KPG boundary is a layer in rocks found all the way around the world, which is very, very rich in an element called iridium. Now, iridium is very, very scarce on Earth. You almost never find it naturally, but it is very, very rich and often found in asteroids. We can look at materials found in the crater and we can look at materials found in the KPG boundary around the world and we can use natural clocks such as carbon dating to see when these events happened and in almost every single instance the KPG boundary and the Chicxulub crater correspond in time very closely. However, most scientists will agree that this impact alone was not enough to kill off the dinosaurs. It had to be some sort of combination of factors. If the asteroid had hit about 100,000 years before or 100,000 years afterwards, which might sound like a long time, but when we're talking about the dinosaurs, really isn't anything at all, then they probably wouldn't have gone extinct. So what were these factors? Well, something which is very likely going to help you to become extinct is a massive amount of disease specific to your species. And who do you think was responsible for this disease? You guessed it right, our old friend fungi. So if the dinosaurs were able to look into the future and see what had become of the terrifying reptiles, they would probably be a little bit embarrassed. The only one left who is still representing the true terror which they instilled in the hearts of animals across the globe would be Godzilla. And unfortunately for them, he doesn't exist. So why after 230 million years of dominating the earth, could the dinosaurs not regain their number one spot? This could be explained in part by a recent discovery that in the months and years after the asteroid impact, the flora of the world was almost totally dominated by fungi. So the KPG boundary, which we spoke about earlier, which is found absolutely everywhere on the globe, consists of around a 10 centimeter layer thick of coal, which is consisting of coal made from fern and other flowering plant taxa, which basically means it's made up of plants which were found around the time of the dinosaurs. However, on top of this layer of coal, anywhere you go on the earth, there is a four millimeter layer basically made completely of fungal spores. This is probably due to the fact that following the asteroid impact, like I said, the sun was almost completely blocked out, which meant that the flowering plants weren't able to photosynthesize, which meant that most of them died out, which left a lot of food around for the fungi to eat. So there are four main types of fungi. There is one, the saprophytes, which mainly decompose other organic material. There are parasites, which latch onto other organisms and basically steal their resources. There are mycorrhiza, which form relationships with the roots of plants, which benefit both organisms. And there are the endophytes, which live alongside plant cells, but in most cases, we simply don't know what they do. So the main group which benefited from the asteroid impact was the saprophytes. When all of the plants died, this left like a banquet of food for them to eat. So not only did the asteroid impact leave the dinosaurs with very little food and the fungi with far too much food, but a large fungal population is actually very, very bad news if you are a 
reptile. Most scientists nowadays think that the dinosaurs had a mixture of cold bloodedness and warm bloodedness. They were cold blooded to the point where they could grow to a much larger size than most animals are able to today, but they were warm blooded to allow agile, fast creatures like the velociraptors to exist. The only problem is if you aren't completely warm blooded, you do leave yourself quite open to a fungal infection. The only time you usually find these kind of infections in mammals is if their immune system is either suppressed or weakened for whatever reason. However, the insides of a cold-blooded animal, even if it's only partially cold-blooded, present a perfect environment for fungi to flourish and basically cause you quite a lot of problems. Many evolutionary biologists think that fungal infections were one of the main driving forces towards the mammals which now dominate the earth becoming warm-blooded. This may explain why the only descendants of the dinosaurs which were able Able to survive, the birds were the ones which happened to be the most warm-blooded. In the short period following the asteroid when the fungi absolutely dominated the earth, it was a huge advantage if you weren't susceptible to fungal infection because the spores were absolutely everywhere. So if you've been watching this video and you still have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, think about it this way. The asteroid was basically the thing which put the dinosaurs on the ropes and then the fungi came along and choke slammed them into submission. So I hope that helped you understand. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Tell me what you thought about it in the comments and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye now.